Hey everyone, I haven't done a MacBook Pro update video in a while. This is my 2019 MacBook Pro. So I'll give you an update on this, how it's running in 2021 and whether it's still running fine today. Also compared to the new M1 chip MacBooks. And then finally I'll talk about any issues if I had any with the MacBooks and what you should look out for if you're looking for a new MacBook Pro today. Stay tuned. So the big question is, do you want to buy an older MacBook like a 2019, which I think is perfectly fine, or do you want the M1 chip ones? Well, the 2019 does run a bit slower than the M1 chip MacBook Pros up today, but it's still super fast. If you're looking to do video editing, which is what I do every day, it runs totally fine. I edit 4K videos, I edit everything on this, and it's super fast. I have no issues. So if you're looking to save money, I really suggest the 2019 MacBook Pros because everything is the same on this. The layout, the keyboard, the touchpad, it has the thumb scan. So with this MacBook Pro here, it is a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i5 with 16 gigabytes of memory. This MacBook is still just as fast or even faster than my 2012 iMac over here. And this 2012 iMac is a fusion drive one and it is super fast, but I love how portable this is and it is super fast. It gives me no issues. So here's the question, if I wanted to upgrade today to a MacBook Pro, and let's say I gave away my MacBook Pro here, my 2019, would I get the M1 chip ones or would I look for a used one? For me, the M1 chip MacBook Pros of right now, currently, I don't want that model because it only has two USB ports. And the thing is, I'll show you right here, I use almost all of my ports on this. I bought this 2019 MacBook Pro with the four port ones. I did the higher model on that and I knew right away that I did not want two ports on it. It's because I connect so many things to this MacBook. I have an external Samsung T5 drive right here, and I have right here my wireless headset by Vonkio right here. This is an awesome headset, by the way. I love this headset. I use it almost every day listening to music, and I can just lay around my bed without the wires around and just walk around my room with this headset. So I love this. So, I love this. so you see, I have two ports already used, but here's the thing. I work on this MacBook so much throughout the day that at near the end of the day, I do need to plug it in to charge, and there you go. I'm using three ports on this already. And then guess what? If I want to extend my monitor, I have to use another port on it. So I really need the four ports on it. And here's the problem of the M1 MacBook Pros of currently right now. You can only get it with two ports in there. I don't know why they did this. And if you want the upgraded model, well, you can only go to the Intel Core i5 ones and without the M1 chips. And that one will have four ports on it. But you know, I do want the M1 chip MacBooks. They are slightly a little bit faster. And anytime I get something new, you know, it's just my preference. I do want the, the fastest one. And so for me, I am going to wait for the M2 chip to see how that one is. And hopefully they'll offer it with four ports because I really need that four port on it. Okay, so let's talk about any issues I've had with this, whether there's been any crashes, how is the keyboard of today? Because I know that a lot of people talked about that with the older MacBook Pros, right? Like the 2019 that has some keyboard, um, the keys being stuck that had issues with that zero issues with the keyboard i had zero issues with the touchpad i love the touchpad i will always get a macbook pro with the touchpad up here now and i've had no issues with the thumb scan right here i scan my finger to log into my macbook pro every day i never type in a password anymore and anytime i buy something online and it allows the thumb scan i always use it so it's perfectly fine and i love that part of it i do hope that in the future they would do a face scan so that i don't have to do the finger uh, scan anymore but i'm going to tell you guys the truth i have had a few crashes nothing very big and it was only with this uh, iMovie program right here where uh, i would be working on my project and then it would just have the spinning wheel and it crashes on me but it was no issues because iMovie is very good with saving my projects. I've never lost anything. I've never had anything corrupted. All I did was just force quit the program and then I'm back where I left off. Has this computer been slow or anything? No, it's super fast. It's never slowed down on me. And then finally, I had one issue with the USB port on here on the lower right. And one day it just stopped working for me. Um, I plugged in a couple of different drives and it just didn't pick it up so i looked it up and i fixed it and it was a very simple fix it was just a syncing issue and all i did was just reset it i'll show you right now how i did it but after that i've never had that issue anymore it was just some kind of fluke or something so quick right here i'm going to show you how to fix the usb problem if you have this issue and uh, i'm going to leave a link to the website right here with step-by-step -step instructions but there are a couple of 
different uh, ways to do it. One is called the resetting SMC method, right? But I didn't have to do that one. I resetted my NVRAM. And I'm gonna show you real quick how to do that right now. Go up to your Apple icon right here, press restart computer. And then right when it restarts, you have to hold down command option and then also hold down P and R. So you have to hold down those four keys right away, right when you restart it. Keep holding those keys down and then you're gonna hear the MacBook chime. It's gonna make a sound and the screen's gonna flash. It might take a couple of seconds, so just leave it there. After it does that, the MacBook is gonna chime again and then just let it boot up as usual. You can let go of the keys and then your USB should work, give it a test. And that's what fixed my USB issue right here. And I've never had that issue ever again. And it could have been because I do a lot of tests on this MacBook. I connect a lot of different devices, a lot of different monitors to it using different cables. And maybe I, um, I don't know, I did something with the syncing on it. But after I did my fix with the resyncing of it, I have no issues with this and it runs perfectly fine. I've never had any issues with shutdown, startup. Now finally, here are some tips on what to look out for when getting a new MacBook Pro, okay? Let's assume I am going to get the new M1 MacBook Pros right here. I'm at the website right here and what I always do is I never get the base model. I always like to upgrade mine. So if you scroll down here, I'm going to look to the right right here. So the one on the left right here, it says it's giving me 256 gigabytes of storage. And that was the problem with this MacBook Pro that I got. I got the 256 one and it was too little. That's why I had to buy my T5 driver here that has one gigabyte of uh, space on it. And I'll show you right here how many drives I've gone through. I have two other external drives right here. I have this one that uh, they're both one gigabyte drives and I have filled that one up already. This one is almost filled up right here, 75% filled up. And then also this one too, I think that one's 75% filled up. So uh, that's the issue there with, uh, if you're doing video editing, you're doing a lot of video stuff, you're gonna need some of these external hard drives. Sometimes I don't wanna carry my drive around. And look at this, this, look at this wire, you know? When I carry it around, I have to carry the wire like that. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's such a hassle to unplug this drive every time that you know, if I want to bring it somewhere and I have to disconnect it, unplug it, it's just a hassle. I don't want to go through that. I know a lot of you guys feel the same way. So I do recommend the 512 gigabyte storage or a one terabyte drive. And then another thing that I do is I like to select this and I like to modify it. This one says, let's see here, eight gigabyte of memory. I always go for the 16 or higher because eight is just too low for today. You want a lot more that helps with graphics and anything that's intense with that. If you're just doing light work, you know, if you're, you're mainly typing and just doing research on your MacBook, you don't need that. But I really do suggest that for anyone getting a new MacBook up today because you can't do upgrades like you can do with the older ones. The memory chips on this, they make it very hard to upgrade. You got to do all the soldering and stuff and no one's going to do that. And then down here, I would go for the one terabyte storage, like I said, because, you know, I just need that extra storage on internally. So for me, it's just totally worth it. But for a lot of you guys, you know, just stick with the 512, but do not go lower than that. It runs out so fast. You wouldn't think it does, but it does. And just think about it. A lot of you will take a lot of photos, right? You're going to transfer it to there. You're going to do a lot of videos and photos on your iPhone. You're going to transfer it. And that takes up a lot of space. Trust me on this. But, you know, I'm going to look out for the new M2 uh, chip MacBook Pros that are going to come out pretty soon. They're going to announce it and I'll see how that one does. So, yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you to decide on what MacBook that you want for today. If you're thinking of buying an older MacBook, I think it's totally fine. You can buy a 2019 like mine right here and it works totally fine. I love this one or just go for the newer ones. But like I said, look out for the tip that I gave you four ports on it if you're doing a lot of work if you don't really need to you can buy a dongle too and you can get some extra ports out of it but look i just get tired of carrying these around unplugging it plugging it in and so i always go for the four ports and like i said go for the 512 storage or higher but if you're on a budget just go for an older macbook pro and it's totally fine they're super fast and this video that i'm shooting right now i'm trying to edit it in 4k and it's so fast on it it streamlines it very well and yeah that's my update on this 2019 macbook pro am i thinking of getting a newer one i think i'm going to give another year i want to see how the new m2 macbook pros are going to come out and i do know that they are a little bit faster than the older macbook just i think they said like what is it 30 percent faster somewhere around there but it's not that much faster for me to drop another 2000 on it or so this one runs totally fine for me. It's only if I'm going to give this one out to, you know, my girlfriend or someone else and then I get a new one, then 
and you know apple is very slow on upgrading their stuff like if you look at the other 13 inch models right here i'm going to scroll past the m1 chip models and go down here look at this it's still only a 2.0 gigahertz uh core i5 even though it is a 10th generation but come on like upgrade this mine is a 2.4 i5 and all they do is just upgrade their they call it the 10th generation so mine is still just as fast as that i wouldn't get a newer one of this one right here the 10th generation i'd probably just jump to the m1 chip ones going forward or the m2 m3 and that is all that i can provide for you guys i hope this helped you out i'll see you in the next video peace